Uh, okay, um, my name is Dennis Castanon. I'm the Director of Operations and Facilities for the Office of Residential Student Services. Uh, and co-presenting with me is uh, Jennifer Van Dyke. She is my housing coordinator for operations. She does all the assignments and all the gritty work that I used to do and now she does. <laughs> uh, so we're here for a presentation in regarding to, for you guys to tell you why living on campus, uh, it's a benefit for our student population. Um, I, I recognize a couple of you guys, some of you guys I don't recognize. Um, hopefully we have some faculty and staff, faculty here, because um, we're always looking at connection to make that connection between residential student services and um, the academic side. Uh, and hopefully throughout this slide you'll notice that there is a benefit to living on campus, uh, and I think that if we connect both the academics uh, to our program, it is extremely beneficial for our student population. Um, so to start off, sorry, um, learning outcomes. Uh, hopefully from here, uh, we want our participants to understand the residential philosophy that Ms. Van Dyke will go over uh, as part of her section and learn how about the new residence hall. I know that all you guys have noticed this big monstrosity that's kind of being built by the Harwood Arena. Uh, that is a residence hall. Uh, it does accommodate approximately 478 spaces for students. So it's a large number of students that will be coming to live on campus uh, this upcoming year. So it's a very exciting for our department. We actually are in the end of It officially will open in July. Uh, it'll be completely done by July, and hopefully by August, all the furniture and students will be able to start moving in. Um, I'll go over as part of the presentation. We'll definitely talk a little bit about that. Um, so just to continue on. Um, Professional support services, uh, our department, it consists of a lot of people, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, we do have um, our own facility staff within the residence halls, separate from the university. So we have our own trades, we have our own uh, staff for that. Uh, we have live-in professionals in each building. Uh, in each residence hall, we do have a professional staff member that either is working on their master or has their master's degree, and they live there with the students and manage that particular building. Additionally, each building, and I'm sure that you guys all know, um, has resident assistants. These are our student staff that work uh, and manage the individual buildings uh, and floors. So each RA is responsible for uh, a ratio anywhere between 1 to 30 or 1 to 60. Uh, 1 to 30 for our first year students, uh, so we have typically two resident assistants on each floor, and 1 to 60 for the upper class students as well. Uh, additionally, we do have support staff uh, in the main office that kind of assist us with the day-to-day -day operations. Um, outside of Ms. Van Dyke's position, we do have somebody that deals with programming uh, and the access program, which uh, we'll talk a little bit about, which is an academic and mentoring program that assists students that live on campus. Um, and that's about it. And we do have, uh, and I know that most of you guys probably know uh, Maximina Rivera. She is the uh, assistant Vice President for Residential Student Services. So she oversees me and um, the rest of the department. <laughs> um, so the philosophy. Okay, so hi everybody. Hi, so I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about what we do in housing. So our residential philosophy is that we really strive to create an environment where our students are both living and learning outside of the classroom experience. Uh, we do that through our programming, we do that through our mentoring and tutoring, through our living learning communities and our community standards. So our educational programming, we base our programs, those are all the activities that we do um, during the evening, during the day. It's based on the social change model, which what we do is we promote the value of equity, social justice, self-knowledge, personal empowerment, collaboration, citizenship, and service. So we have three dimensions. Our first dimension is the individual values, which is personal development and wellness. So this, this one uh, bases on gender, sexual identity, emotional attitude towards relevant issues and events, analyze and evaluate personal beliefs and values, personal academic goals, uh, the tactics and resources for personal and mental health, um, exploring the majors and careers, networking with faculty and academic habits. This one we use a lot when we collaborate outside of our department with other departments. We collaborate a lot with um, the Counseling Center, 
to talk about uh, healthy, healthy habits. This is our area where we collaborate with some of our faculty. They'll come in and they'll do programs with our students. So sometimes we have RAs who are in a class and they really enjoy their faculty member and they ask them if they want to come over and they want to do a program in the residence hall for their floor. And they'll come in and they'll, they'll set up um, in one of our spaces where we do a program. So this is the dimension where a lot of our faculty members will come in and connect with our students. Our next one is our multiculturalism. Uh, individual difference and respect for diversity. So this is more of our diversity goal. Um, our, with our multiculturalism, it's, we bring in people to talk about travel learn opportunities. Um, we try to help them uphold their common uh, core values. Uh, they examine cultural and global issues. Uh, they manage their conflicts. Uh, how to, this is where we let them go through any unique talents that they have, cultural perspectives, um, sometimes our programs are in the form of lectures, sometimes they're in the form of we have students come in and they'll prepare a dish from their, uh, their ethnicity and then they share that and they talk about uh, what it was like growing up. So these are some of the different types of programs that we do in this, uh, this dimension. Our third dimension is our societal and community value. This is more of like our community service um, type of mention it's our civic responsibility, community service, involvement at Kane, how can they get involved in groups, uh, the roles to uphold the values of the community. So what makes them a upstanding member of society and trying to help them instill these, uh, these values, awareness and concerns and issues that impact the community. So these are the types of programs that we do in this um, dimension. Next we have our mentoring and tutoring program. So we have, Dennis mentioned something called our access program. We have a mentoring program for any of the students that fall below a 2.0 uh, GPA. So if you fall below a 2.0, we actually assign you a mentor. Your mentor uh, has four sessions with you during the semester. We have you go to two tutoring sessions and we have you go to one of our workshops. These are all done within the residential student services. And we found that over the last, I think we've started this in 2012, on average, we have about 60% of the students actually have increased their GPAs um, from being a part of this. So we really find that one-on-one -on -one connection with these students uh, has been assisting them. And our goal is to get our students to, you know, back to where they can be on track to graduate. We find a lot of the students who come into our program during the spring semester are our first year freshmen. So their first semester they came to school, they had that great experience of, wow, I'm away from home, I'm free, and we're like, all right, now let's reel it in. What do we have to do? Our workshops focus on uh, study tips. They focus on academic, how can you um, do well in school? Uh, our workshops, they also talk about stress relief. Um, so how to be a well-balanced student. And then our tutoring, we have tutoring in the residence halls, uh, Sunday night through Wednesday night. Uh, we have group tutoring. You come in any time between 7 o'clock and 11 o'clock uh, at night. You come in as drop-in. We have it in math, in writing, uh, science, math, writing, and science. Uh, so they come in. If you want one-on-one -on -one tutoring, we are tutors. They can actually go on tutor track and register for an appointment with one of our tutors. All of our tutors, they have to maintain a certain GPA. A lot of our uh, tutors actually come from the STEM program for the math and sciences. And then the writing, a lot of them are our English majors. So with that, as you can see, living on campus is not just a room. I know that a lot of people kind of associate living on campus with a dorm. Uh, and for residence life people, that's a very bad word to use. Uh, just as an FYI, is residential living, living on campus, the residence halls. Uh, that would be the perfect terminology for that, just because we do, ha we do more than just house them. We want to make sure that they succeed in the university, they succeed in life. And so we do see our, our living on campus very valuable. Um, I think over the last few years, the president, uh, during his presentations, he usually talks about you know, that people that live on campus uh, succeed. And a lot of the learning that happens, it happens outside of the classroom. It's reinforced outside of the classroom. Um, because again, you're with your peers. Sometimes you might have a discussion that you discuss in the classroom and that communication or conversation continues in the residence halls. And so the learning happens outside of the classroom. It just grows. Uh, you're exposed to different people. You're exposed to different things. Uh, and so uh, living on campus, and, and I'll show a slide uh, briefly, 
that talks about the students that live on campus for four years tend to graduate 50% more than the students, than the rest of our student population. So there is a big uh, correlation with living on campus and succeeding in the university setting. Um, in the next slide we talked about, we do have three lear living learning communities that we are uh, working to improve. Obviously, if you have faculty members here that are interested in assisting us with making sure that these living communities are successful, we'll be extremely excited and we have business cards after our presentation. But we do have uh, three areas that we focus on. Uh, we have uh, a, a WELL program, uh, which is Women um, Empowered by Leadership and Learning. Um, and again, we have programs specifically towards that where we have uh, some staff members and faculty member kind of have some programs to encourage and empower individuals to succeed uh, not only in the university but also outside of the university. Uh, we have a leadership uh, floor uh, that we work with the Center for Leadership and Service. Uh, so we have a correlation with that. Uh, we find that uh, a lot of students that are in high school, that they're basically the top of their class, they're the president and vice president, and they want to kind of have a continuation of that. And there's a limited amount of spaces that you, when you're coming into a new university uh, to be engaged, so we give this opportunity to them. And a lot of those students that live in the leadership program are actually part of the bronze program, which uh, if you guys have been in a, any of the presentations from the Center for Leadership and Service, uh, they are extremely selective in selecting, I believe, 50 to 60 students uh, that apply and it's a very competitive uh, process for that. And lastly, we do have a STEM uh, floor again. Uh, we do have a lot of students that are in the STEM program and they're extremely successful and there are tutors. Uh, uh, and we want to make sure that they're kind of engaged with the same colleagues and so we have opportunities for them to just continue that learning in, within the residence halls. Um, in addition to that, we do have leadership opportunities uh, for those students who live on campus. So we have resident assistants. Uh, we talked a little bit about that. Uh, we hire approximately 50 resident assistants uh, within the department. Uh, in those positions, obviously, they, they are extremely important because they are our first line of defense, so to speak, if we have to put a title to them. Uh, right now, they're in training. Uh, they've been in training for the last two days. Uh, they usually have a two-week training period before the students come in and we try to kind of encompass a little bit of everything uh, because they will notice people's or students um, change in behavior, in mood, and sometimes it is just what we need to be able to assist those students uh, so that they could grow. Uh, so we have 50 resident assistants. Additionally, we hire approximately uh, 120 uh, to 130 other students. Uh, we have desk assistants, so our buildings are uh, managed 24-7. There's somebody always at the desk. Uh, we do have professional security that comes in the evenings, but we do have our student staff working until midnight. Uh, we have game rooms. We have uh, opportunities to work in the community centers in each building. So there is a lot of learning opportunities and uh, job opportunities that they're able to um, take while living on campus. Additionally, we do have a uh, hall council. So each building, we try to have them take ownership and pride uh, and so we organize those individuals that are in the leadership floor and then tend to become our, uh, go to our sophomore and junior years and they kind of go to the different buildings. We have uh, a group of leaders in each individual building to kind of push their own agenda in regards to what type of programs they would like to see uh, and what they would like to be active on. All right, so how many of you guys are associated with an academic department? Okay, so what this slide shows you is how many students from each of the colleges actually live on campus. So it has, this is how many students lived on campus during the fall semester this past fall compared to what was on the IR's website. So this shows you how many of your students are living on campus. What you don't see on here is the Nathan Weiss Graduate College. We do have approximately 20 graduate students who are in the, who live on campus right now. However, their majors were listed underneath their the college is not Nathan Weiss Graduate College. So we do have graduate students who live here. Uh, they're just listed underneath the other academic colleges. Um, so it is something uh, we would love to see. If you're seeing your numbers and you're like, wow, we need to increase, definitely partner with us. We would love to see. There's lots of benefits to living on campus, and that's the next thing uh, we're going to be talking about. Why live on campus? Why do students say they live on campus? What do they get as a benefit of living on campus? And we would love to partner with you if you want us to come to your departments to talk to your students, to tell them, uh, hey, let's apply for housing for next year. We can talk with your students. 
So we did a survey last year to our students, and one of our questions was an open-ended question which asked them, explain to us, or tell us in one word, why you chose to live on campus. And this is what we got from them. Uh, so some of the things that were really important to them was their friends, their friends are here, they're close to class, uh, it was convenience, they like the freedom. So these are the reasons why the students are saying, you know, they're living here. Next we have a video from our students when they checked in, and this talks about why they were choosing to move in their first, it's on move-in day. So you'll see there's lots of excitement, there's parents, you'll see what some of the inside of the rooms look like. Uh, so you'll see in the video uh, why they're so excited about coming to live on campus. When I came here, because we went to several colleges, but it was the at-home feeling that said it for me. You want the learning strength, but you want to feel like you belong somewhere, and I think that's what he got, and I did too. The college itself, what I hear, is an awesome school, and I'm glad he chose King. Moving away from home, it's nice, but I'm a little bit nervous about it, because you are away from home, and you are on your own, and you're trying to do these, you know, you, this is life and reality hits you. As, as soon as you leave high school, reality hits you. You're going off to college. Dorming with my best friend is going to be fun, but it could be hectic sometimes. We've been like friends since like second grade, we started playing basketball together, we went to high school together, we've been on the same team, it's pretty cool. I'm excited to be away from home, but I'm nervous, because like first time being away. Knowing that I get to be on my own, it's like pretty exciting. Like when I'm older, I'm going to have to take care of myself, so it's exciting to like get out now and be able to do it. It's a bit daunting, but it's fun, it's, it's exciting, it is. I'm just coming in uh, with like, you know, open arms, open eyes. Just, I'm just ready to embrace freshman year, whatever comes my way. I'm most excited to just explore what I want to do in my life, you know, just try out new things, see what I want to do, what I like, what kind of person I am, and go on this kind of like lifelong journey. Doesn't that make you excited? It makes me excited they're coming back on Sunday, so it makes me excited that they're coming back and hopefully their outlook is, you know, we can help get that energy uh, for their second semester and for our returning upperclassmen, help them reach that graduation. So it's really exciting to see them when they come in and what we can help provide them. Yeah, I mean, we definitely see, um, been doing that almost this, almost 20 years here at Kane, and I've seen the students basically transform from year one until they graduate. Uh, some of them actually taking professional positions after they graduate, and it's definitely, there's a big gap that happens and they grow as individuals. Um, whether it be just because of the residence halls or because of their program that they're in or because of uh, the other programs that they're part of, uh, but there is a big growth that we see. Uh, and, and we see that, we track that growth. Uh, we, we're able to see that. Um, so again, benefits of living on campus, uh, living smart, I did mention that about 50% of those students who uh, live on campus within four years, they tend to graduate. So. Um, our graduation rate is, I would say, better than uh, what we currently have. Um, live close, uh, obviously they're within 10 minutes of everything in the university, classroom, 
uh, and you will probably find, especially the faculty, uh, that they're still coming late. They're the ones who are coming late. They're the ones who are coming with their pajamas on. Uh, but it is a benefit to live on campus. You know, you could just get up and you waltz in into class, um, but it is close. Um, you're connected. Uh, you are exposed to different people, uh, whether it be different backgrounds, whether it be different economic uh, backgrounds. Uh, we last fall semester we had about 130 students from WKU that lived on campus and so a lot of those students were connected with our students and ironically a lot of the students that then tend to go to WKU are the ones who uh, they stayed with their roommates or suite mates and so they're making connections uh, and you know it is a global experience it, it truly is and I believe that right now uh, additionally to that uh, the uh, the office of the, the architect department uh, they're taking about 20, 16 students to Rome. Uh, and again, those are connections that students are going to be making globally, not just locally. Um, secure, uh, our buildings are secure 24-7. As I mentioned, there's always somebody at the security desk. Parents are not allowed to come into the building unless the student signs them in. Um, we have a process where every single guest is logged. Uh, we require a driver's license or a valid, driver, uh, valid ID from the state of New Jersey to be able to get signed in into the building so we know who's in the building, uh, when they check out, um, and so we, we have a nice uh, process for that. Uh, supported, Ms. Van Dyke talked about uh, the different services that we have within the residence halls, and so we try to make as many connections as we can with the student outside of the classroom. Um, and then they live in a community. You know, as the students are talking, and you, you saw in the video, they, that's their first experience. They're coming into something brand new. They're in the same boat. I know that my freshman year, when I went to school, you tend, I tend to create a little community with all, all those individuals that are in the same uh, situation that you're in. Um, we try to create that outside of the freshman year students as well, you know, some of the groups that we have in organizations. And so they tend to kind of create those communities. And it is, again, something that they grow and learn outside of the classroom. And they lived involved. Uh, I think that uh, the university has had the presidential award for involvement for over the last few years. And I think this year, the current president has changed that. But it, the involvement within the university, I think last year was about 30,000 hours. The students um, have donated uh, volunteerism. And a lot of those students live on campus. Uh, so they have the ability to be able to do that. Now, I would say that a lot of our students also tend to work. Uh, outside, uh, whether it be within the residence halls or outside, and so they uh, have the proximity of that, and they're extremely involved. They're all over the place. We have student athletes that do everything, and it's amazing that you see those students that are ca on campus. Thank you. Uh, so on campus, we do have uh, different types of housing available. Our first-year students uh, live in a suite style, and I'll show a, a slide in a couple of minutes. Uh, that's typically two bedrooms with a little suite in the middle and they share a bathroom. So there's always about four students to a bathroom uh, for the most part. We do have very limited triples that you might have five students into one bathroom and that's two bedrooms typically. Um, uh, the new building that we're uh, opening again is a first year student uh, building. Uh, two, suite, two bedrooms connected with a suite with a kitchenette area and we'll talk a little about that as well. And then our upper class students actually have an apartment style set up, which has two bedrooms and they have a living room slash kitchenette and a bathroom. So it's a total of four students that uh, live in, a, in an apartment style set up. So some of the amenities that we have that we offer to our students. We have a dining hall within upper class and residence hall. It's an all you care to eat. Our students, they all get meal plans. So part of their meal plan is swipes into that cafeteria. For our freshman students, they have unlimited swipes, so if they want to go in the cafeteria 10 times in a day, they could. For our upperclassmen, they have the option to get the unlimited meal plan, but a lot of them will choose to get our uh, set meal plan. So they get 96 meals, and then they get cougar dollars that they could eat in other places on campus. Uh, our buildings are very safe. So we talked about our 24-hour day, seven days a week uh, security. We also have all of our buildings have fire alarms in them, in the rooms and in the common areas. All of them are sprinklered, so in case something were to happen, our, splinker, our sprinklers can activate and uh, turn off all, like get rid of the fire. 
All of our rooms are cal rated, so if they close the door, it actually will contain the fires within the building. All the furniture, we're very particular about the furniture we put in the buildings to make sure that they're cal rated, to make sure that our students are safe. So our rooms are safe for our students. And what Jen refers to cal rating is a Californian standard that um, it basically it doesn't allow a, an item to actually burst in flames. It, it will actually will delay it. And I mean, I have the expert here, Len, could talk about what a. <laughs> Cal 133 actually is the type of material that we use for uh, our furniture that we have. So it's the highest level of um, testing that could be done, uh, the materials that we get. Not only is the fabric, but also like the mattresses. The mattress actually go through a different standard, um, the Boston standard, which is a whole different one altogether. Um, all of our buildings have community kitchens where the students, if they want to cook, uh, because they don't have stoves in the room, they could come downstairs, they can cook. Oftentimes we'll see students downstairs, sometimes the floors will come down and they'll make cupcakes together. Uh, some students, uh, our upperclassmen tend to actually make their dinners downstairs, so you'll see them cooking uh, meals downstairs. Uh, we have a shuttle that takes them off campus, they can go to different eateries, they can also do shopping, and that's something that all the student has to do is show their cane ID card, they get on the shuttle and we'll take them. Uh, there's a set route, so they actually get on and uh, so they follow our shuttle schedule. Uh, all the rooms come equipped with internet, phone, uh, cable, and then behind one of our buildings we actually have a community garden where some, t uh, some years the students, they actually all, uh, sometimes will have a floor that they say, all right, I want to take over this garden this year. And we, there have been some times where they have gone through, they have uh, weeded it, they planted the vegetables, and then the, when they come back in the fall, they have all these vegetables that they're able to go in and pick. So it's actually something that's kind of cool behind our Rogers Hall. Uh, we have all of our washers, uh, all of our buildings have laundry rooms. Uh, all of our washers and dryers are actually coinless. So one of the things that's great about housing on camp uh, at Kane is all they pay is their housing fee. They pay the fee for housing, the fee for their meal plan, and then that's it. There's no additional fee. So their internet's included, their cable's included, their telephone's included, their laundry is included. It's not something that they have to come and bring their quarters. It's not something that they have to add onto their meal cards or onto their ID cards. This is something that's included in the cost already. Um, we already talked about the 24-hour security. We also have mailboxes. All of our students get assigned a mailbox, so if they want to get mail, they can get mail. We also have a mail room. A lot of our students are getting packages, so we actually, our mail room each year is getting larger and larger. We actually are looking to relocate where it is because of all the packages that our students are uh, getting delivered to them. Uh, we have three game rooms, so currently we have two game rooms in one in upperclassmen residence hall, one in freshman residence hall, and then the new building is also going to have a game room. So we'll have three game rooms where the students can go in. It's a great place for them to relax. Our, the game room that's in our first year student building right now um, is always busy. So the students, they use it as a place to de-stress, and you'll see them, that's where they, the first is they move in and the game room already has people in it. So it's a great way for them to start to get to know each other. Um, we have a screening room. Our screening room holds about 48 to 50 people. We do movies in there, sometimes we do lectures in there, sometimes every Friday night we do karaoke in there. Uh, we have, sometimes they'll watch different sporting events in there. We're going into award season, so sometimes the RAs, it'll hold roughly one floor in there, so an RA will reserve it and they say, all right, I want to go watch the Oscars, and they'll have an Oscar showing uh, party in there. Uh, and then we have a computer lab. Uh, right now our computer lab is in upper class and residence hall. We're also adding a business center and we're going to talk about that when we talk about our new building. And then we have learning spaces. We have lounges on different floors. Uh, in all the upper class and buildings we have community centers on the first floor um, where students can go. They can study there. They can hang out there. Um, for our first year students we tend to put more of the lounges on each of the floors. Uh, the students uh, that is where we do some of the tutoring, is on the lounges on the freshman uh, floors. We also use them, that's where we do our programming. Um, it's space where, because they don't have a living room area in their room, a lot of the times if, they're, if they want to leave their room and they need a space, they can go out onto their hall and just go to one of their uh, lounges. Uh, so, back to uh, the new residence hall that is being open in the fall semester. Um, as you can see, uh, a small rendering um, and you could probably notice now the shell is 99% almost up. Uh, I believe that they started putting windows this week and you'll see those going up really fast. Um, we're slated to open uh, for the fall 2018. Uh, talked about some of the things that they would have. Um, I think inside, 
you'll see that we do have a business center and also a game room that's being uh, built within the residence hall. Uh, the game room uh, will have a pool table, a gaming station, a lot of seating for students. Uh, the colors are very eclectic and very modern uh, and very fun. I literally had a presentation just exclusively about the new building uh, an hour or two ago for our resident staff. Um, and they were able to see the palette of colors and how the windows look and they were all excited. They were kind of drooling and I'm like, can I go over there? I'm like, we haven't decided yet uh, who's going where. Um, in this building, it is a first year student uh, building. We do have a lot of lounges. Uh, each floor has a total of three lounges. Uh, they, they could use two learning lounges and one uh, community lounge that they could kind of congregate and meet. Uh, so there is a lot of space for them to be able to uh, do a lot of the work as a group or individually uh, if they don't want to do it in their rooms themselves. Um, the typical room, again, uh, we talked a little bit about it, and maybe this is a laser. Oh, yeah, look at that. So we have the two bedrooms with a kitchenette area and then a bathroom here. So as you can see, uh, the students have a nice, comfortable space to be able to, if they don't want to be within their bedroom, they could go into the common area within their suite, and then outside they would have um, lounges that we have available for them as well. The freshman uh, residence halls, so right now are, well, I keep calling them new, and right now they're almost nine years old. Uh, the, the big concrete st uh, structures that we have uh, where the cafeteria is and our first year students' buildings are, uh, they contain, um, we have a total of 15 suites per floor. Uh, we accommodate about 60 students or so. Uh, and again, the setup is similar. Uh, the bedrooms are larger. Uh, than the previous one, uh, but same setup. There's two bedrooms. Uh, the bedrooms, each bedroom in this building, we have a micro fridge, so it's a refrigerator and a microwave in each bedroom. In the new building that we're constructing, we have a kitchenette, so we actually have a full size refrigerator and a microwave in the kitchenette area. So that's the big difference between the two. Uh, again, they do have a bathroom and a small uh, vanity area in this section that they could use. Uh, our upper class students, we talked about that they are apartment styles and as you can see it literally is two bedrooms. They have a kitchen slash living room area that's a large space and they're able to uh, congregate. And so it is very funny to see uh, our students transition from the first year building to the upper class building because in the first year student building they know everybody in the building because they don't want to be in the rooms. Yeah, they don't have that additional space so they go out into the lobbies, they go into their uh, the lounges, upper class students, they have an apartment. They don't know who lives right across from them. They're like, do you, your neighbor, I don't know who lives there. I'm like, I'm like it's right next door. Like, so it's very funny to see the difference between our first year students and upper class students because just because of that apartment style setup, uh, a lot of universities down south actually are going to community bathrooms kind of set up because they see that there is more, people kind of connect more in that type of setting. It wouldn't work in uh, the, the northern east coast uh, but yeah, that's a trend down south. Um, and so this is our contact information. If you have any questions, concerns, by all means, we're available. Uh, you can check our website, uh, follow us on Twitter, Facebook. Uh, Jen oversees all of that, so she would know exactly uh, how, to hand, how to contact us. But uh, thank you for your time. By all means, we definitely would like to uh, pair up with you guys if you are interested in helping us out, connect with our students, or if there's something that you guys uh, see that we might be able to do differently, by all means, uh, we're here to help the students. Thank you.